The basic idea of the miscellaneous is that there are lots of attributes of things. You look at a strawberry, it's got color, weight, size, it's got some history, it's got genetic information. I mean, there's attribute after attribute. And which ones we pay attention to depends on what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to cook, taste matters a lot. If you're decorating, size and color, it all depends on what you're interested in. It became uh, clearer to me over time that the solution to the information overload problem that we were warned about in the early 90s was in fact to generate more information, more metadata. There's information in messiness and businesses need that information. So they can be efficient by narrowing their vision, but they're being efficient but not very smart. If you instead structure and order your information so that it's perfectly crisp and clear and everything in its place, you actually lose a huge amount of information. And that's, that costs your business in every way, including in terms of its ability to innovate. Because innovation generally happens at the messy intersections of ideas. Uh, but there's also a tremendous amount of information that comes from the users that users have, that em employees have, and that customers and suppliers have. If you can gather some of that, which means allowing them to, to do it, then you've got a richer set of, of information, of meaning, significance that you can, you can mine, you can, you can find uh, relationships in, discover maybe new products or new markets. So science has always been, or at least for a long time now, has been uh, about noting the properties and attributes and seeing their relationships, not about finding a single order. So their view of the universe is, is quite miscellaneous. And the other side of this, qu quickly for science, is that the, when the mechanism of science is publishing in paper journals, a tiny amount of information can be released. A tiny amount. Now that it's so easy to distribute and publish information, we can also start publishing our work in progress. We have to note in it, this is not done, but nevertheless, by a scientist publishing our results early, this is the data from a study, somebody else may notice that this is a very promising lead to curing cancer or whatever. So the, the availability of the information with the metadata, the information about that information that says, and by the way, this is an initial study, don't take it too seriously, is tremendously valuable. Our kids generally are connected with other, whether they're doing their homework or working, they're talking with other, other kids, which means they're doing homework together, they're doing reports together, but they're being graded as if they're doing all their work individually, and they're being taught implicitly that to be educated means to internalize a lot of information, because that's what they get tested on. But we've externalized facts now. We have search engines. If you don't know something, there's no reason to remember it. You look it up. State capitals is a famous example in the United States. Who cares? You know, look it up. The internet is too often considered to be this swamp of bad information, and the teachers want to drive the students into the library where the information has been approved and credentialed, and which is fine, except that that's not how they're going to be learning in the rest of their lives. So I would rather, personally, that the teachers say, in most cases, go find the information. Use the library, go on the internet, but we are going to talk about the sources that you bring back on the internet, because I know you're going to bring back stuff that you should not be believing, and it's really important that we talk about this as a class. I just want to say it's also important that we not mythologize Britannica and the New York Times as if everything in there is, is right. We have learned, we know more than that. We know that there are lots of mistakes in everything we humans do. Librarians do many, many things really well. I mean, they are not just curators of information, but they're also connectors of information. So they know how to find stuff and how things connect and can tell you what you, what you don't know and why you should be looking over here. And that's a really, really valuable resource. Um, so the physical library will have to play a different role at some point, in 10 years, 20 years. Uh, and as many have said, that maybe they will become the place for humans to get together in the real world and to engage in all of the activities around adult learning. 
I know a lot of people say, uh, I love print, I'll never give up print. And I like print too, I'm, you know, I'm a writer. I, but I think we'll give up print like that. We'll give up print as quickly as we switch to iPods. Mm -hmm.